Hey, so I've been wanting to do a snowpack video for a while, but I've been putting it off because I didn't want to go through the learning curve while I was working on other videos. But then I realized after I started doing it, this is the easiest thing to use, man. This thing is beautiful. Now, first of all, if you don't know what snowpack is, it's defined as the faster front end build tool. And if you're familiar at all with Webpack, this is basically a replacement for Webpack potentially. And I can definitely see that. I was using it. I love it. I, I prefer it over Webpack in almost every single way. Um, so hopefully this is the future. And I've seen a lot of people talking about it and a lot of people migrating to it. So I know that it's definitely gaining traction. It has 15,000 GitHub stars. So it definitely has some support. But I was a little bit skeptical on one part of that. And the part was, how hard is this thing? What is the learning curve? And it turns out there is almost none. It turns out that if you want to get started with it, there's like pretty much no learning curve at all. And um, you just pretty much get started with it and you instantly see the speed benefits that it gives you. I, I saw this line here. It says, once you try it, it's impossible to go back to anything else. And I was like, challenge accepted, except turns out they're right. Now, I, I, if you use Create React App for a React application, odds are you're just going to keep using Webpack because it has everything bundled together. But in this video, what I want to do is I want to create a React application without Create React App. And I want to use Snowpack to do that. And it turns out it is so easy to do that. In fact, it is better in every way. Um, you know, I don't want to overhype it. So I just want to go a little bit through the quick start to talk about how to get this thing set up. And then I'm going to basically set up a React project and talk about how I'm doing it as I do it. So it's going to be kind of like a tutorial, but it's so simple that it's not really going to need an actual tutorial. However, if you want an, a full tutorial on Snowpack to kind of see how to do like your own custom configuration and more advanced features, let me know in the comments. And while you're down there, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. All right, cool. That's enough plugging for me today. I'm going to go ahead and click this get started button and let's talk about what's going on here. If you're familiar at all with Webpack, you know that you can have a web server with Webpack. So there's the Webpack web server and that web server is what you use while you're developing. And every time you save a file, it rebuilds the entire application and then rebundles it and then serves it back to the browser. Well, with Snowpack, the massive benefit, of course, being the performance or the speed, it works a little different. Instead of rebundling the entire application, it only changes and updates the file that you change. So if you have an entire application, it caches all of that indefinitely. Whenever you make a change to say file B, it only rebuilds file B, but it only does that when you need it in the browser. So technically, if you're not using that file, in the browser at that given point when you when you do control s or command s to save the file it doesn't really rebundle anything the second that it pulls itself into the browser the second that the browser needs that file that's when it does it so really what you have is like an insanely fast build tool and i mean insanely fast because i'm talking so fast that when i hold control and press s and I save, there's almost a zero delay between when I save and when there's an update on the screen. And apparently it doesn't matter how big your project is, it stays that speed because of how it works, how I just explained it. With Webpack, it rebundles the entire application. So as the app gets bigger and bigger, the bundle times get longer and longer. But with Snowpack, it's just always lightning fast. And that's what makes Snowpack so great. And I can attest to that, it's amazing. But it's also amazing because of how freaking easy it is to get up and started with it. Kind of blew my mind. So you have to have an NPM project, um, you know, NPM in it, you get yourself a package JSON file and some node modules, and you have to install Snowpack as a dev dependency. And once you do that, you have access to the commands that Snowpack offers. And you can use it through NPX, but you can also use it through Yarn or PNPM. But I'm going to be using NPX because that's, in my opinion, the way to go. But, you know, you can use whatever thing you like using. But um, yeah, so if you want to start up the dev server, you can just do npx snowpack dev and it just runs the server. And then you can make that your start script in your package.json file. And yeah, I mean, it's it really is that simple. So enough of this. I'm going to go ahead and shrink my, my little uh, webcam thing and go ahead and open up a project. So let me get my terminal to where it needs to be. All right, so I'm just bringing the terminal down here. 
making the text a little bigger, a lot bigger. All right, so I'm inside of a snowpack tutorial folder that I just created. If I LS inside of here, it's completely empty. So this is just an empty folder. We're gonna create a React app from scratch. Without using Create React app, we're gonna use snowpack. This is gonna be great. But how do we get a package.json file? How do we initialize an NPM project? Well, it's super easy. You just do NPM init. And then it takes you through some prompts. That's the name of it. That's the version. This is a tutorial. Entry point, index.js, that's fine. Test command, don't need that. Git repository, don't need that. Keywords, don't need that. Author, I'll just put my name. License, we'll do MIT. And then I will type in yes. Now when I ls, I have a package.json file. I'm going to open this with a VS code. You can see I have a package.json file. And if I go inside of here, it has the license I gave it, the author I gave it. So we initialized an NPM project. Now we have to do what it said, which is install snowpack. So I'm just going to do that. That was like super fast. Um, anyway, so that exists now. So now I, if I go back to my project and look inside of my package.json file, I have snowpack as a dev dependency. Um, so I know that that's there and it's inside of my node modules as well. I need to uh, I need to add in um, my my start script. So whenever I run npm start, I want to run snowpack dev. So I don't have any files in here right now. So let me create an index.html file and I'll just get my boilerplate up and inside of the body, I'll just put like hello world, something very generic. And let's see what, uh, let's see what happens when I run npm start, npm start. Okay. So first of all, wow, that was extremely fast. Um, I didn't even have a chance to read the text on the screen. Okay. So nothing to install because there's no dependencies that have changed. And by the way, when you install a new dependency, the way that that works is really interesting. Um, I highly recommend you take a look at the documentation. If you, again, if you want me to do a full tutorial, let me know in the comments because I will do it. You know I will. But anyway, um, check this out. I'm going to switch this from Hello World to Hello Worlds. I mean, as soon as I pressed save, it was it was there. But anyway, so that's cool and all. I'll, I'll change the title to be something like... Uh, snowpack demo or custom react app something like that okay so anyway we have that we need to actually install react and react dom in order to use react which react is just a library so we can install it over npm npm install react and we also want react dom okay now we have that i'm going to go ahead and go back to running the application I have React and React DOM installed. So now that I have React and React DOM installed, I don't really want anything in the body other than a div tag with an ID equal to root. So this will be where we inject our entire React application. And I need to reference a JavaScript file, which will be the entry point for the React application. And for like every React application, probably anybody's ever used that ends up being an index.js or index.jsx file. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to actually create a new folder called source because that's like the standard, I guess. And I'm going to drag my HTML file into that. And I'm also going to create an index.js file. Actually, I'm going to call it index.jsx because I'm going to use JSX in this. And we get JSX support right out of the box with um, with Snowpack, which is mind blowing because normally if you're using Webpack, you have to have, you know, these Babel extensions. Um, you know, you, you would basically have to make sure you install these third party libraries to make sure that JSX gets compiled into JavaScript. But you don't have to do that at all with Snowpack. It just works right out of the box. So a normal React application is going to have this stuff. And I'm going to make this bigger so we can see it. We import React and React DOM. And then we have React DOM dot render. And then this is where we're going to put our app component. This should look pretty familiar to anybody who uses normal React uh, from create React app. This is pretty standard. And we called that div in our index.html file. We gave it an ID of root. And so that's what this second parameter is here. It's saying document get element by ID root. And then whatever we put here, it's going to put into that root div. So if I go into my index.jsx file and do something like I am react and save it, I have to make sure that I'm running it. It looks like I am running it. I have to refresh though. Um, it says it can't be found. Let me, let me figure out what's going on here. NPM run start. Ah, okay. I need to actually in my index.html file, I need to go ahead and reference that JavaScript file in a script tag. So the source is going to be dot forward slash source slash. Actually, it's just in the same folder. So dot forward slash index dot 
.js. Now, when it compiles from a JSX file to a JavaScript file, it ends up being a .js file. So we're actually going to use .js instead of .jsx. So this index.jsx file is going to become an index.js file. So just, just remember that. That's why I'm referencing it like this instead. Um, but the index.html file, now that I think about it, should not be in the source folder. <laughs> it needs to be at the at the root level. So I need to put slash source slash index.js. And the last thing I have to do here is just put type equals module to tell the browser that this that we're using ES modules here because the um, ES modules are supported by default with Snowpack. So I need to make sure that I tell the browser that this is a module and it is an ES module. So we get I am React. So what that basically means is we're using React now without create React app. We just created our own React application from scratch using the React library. We didn't have to use any uh, create React app or any command line tools other than um, Snowpack. Um, so Snowpack could be our new build tool and it's so fast. It's so amazing. It's so easy. I'm in love with it. So I'm going to create a new folder called app. And this is where it's going to start looking more like a normal React application. So inside of the app folder, I'm going to create an app.jsx file and, you know, export const app is equal to. And I'm going to return, just return a div and say something like I am the app component. And I'm going to export it with an index.js file. So if you followed many of my tutorials, you'll be pretty familiar with this concept right here. We just want to export the app here in an index file. So we're exporting this component with this index file so that we can import it like this instead of like this. So we can import it like this is just cleaner, I think, especially when you have multiple components inside of the same folder. At that point, you can do like A, B, C from and then the same folder instead of it being on three separate lines. Totally my preference here. Okay, so instead of returning this div, I'll return the app component and we see React is not defined. Now, this is where it gets interesting because in version 17 of React, if you're using Create React app, it has its own JSX engine and it knows how to parse through this and finds it and says, okay, you don't have to import React anymore. So if you're using Create React app, you don't have to import React here, but we're not using Create React app. So we need to import React from React. That's all that's saying. And now we get I am the app component. So now we really do have like a freaking like a React app using Snowpack. It's great. This is how easy it is. But even better, we can use CSS modules right out of the box. So I'm going to give a dot main class and set the color to red. By the way, I'm going to put this on the right so we can see how fast this updates. Come on. All right. So in here, I'll just simply import styles from styles.module.css. And then I'll give this a class name styles dot main. Now watch over here. I'm going to press save. Watch how fast it changes. Boom. Love it. All right. Anyway, sweet. So now we have CSS modules react. We have a react folder structure with JSX and we're using snowpack and it really only took a few minutes. I mean, really, it's it is that simple. Like I could come in here and create a new component, you know, component two, new file component two dot JSX, you know, import react from react and then just create another component, you know, and then use the index.js to export it. And then we can then import that into this component. So I've imported this component two that I just created and I show you in the browser that now I am component two is then the browser as well. So basically the reason why I was showing you that is because we can go through and create an entire React application as if we use create React app from the get go here. But now we're using Snowpack, which has the added benefit of that super speed. So now we basically basically have a supercharged React application here. Love it. So I challenge you to go and try this yourself, especially if you're somewhat new to React, because what this is going to do for you is it's going to get you used to Snowpack, which I think is going to end up being the future anyway. And on top of that, it's going to get you more used to how React works because by skipping the create react app step you're basically forcing yourself to have a better understanding of how react works because you're having to do some of those steps yourself manually but yeah yeah i just challenge you to do this and tell me in the comments if you want to if you want a full snowpack tutorial because i'll do it but I, I just i'm super excited about this and i think that 2021 is going to be a big year for snowpack and i think by 2022 or at least late into 2022 we're going to start seeing libraries or frameworks shipping with snowpack instead of webpack for instance Next.js, um, maybe even create react app will start shipping with snowpack instead of webpack i just think that it's the future. We'll see what happens though. I could be wrong. But anyway, that was a fun little quick overview of Snowpack. If you liked it, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video.